Yeah, go ahead, climb that grass. Hello everybody and welcome back to the 2022 Herping Vlog. Today we are taking a step back in time again to the summer of 2022. Winter is in full swing now in Georgia and I have saved a few of my favorite videos of the year to upload now just so that we have some fresh and exciting content in case the winter weather is not conducive to herping, which it definitely has not been so far during the uh, midweeks of November. It's been very cold and inhospitable for snakes. So take a trip back with me to warmer days in the Chihuahuan Desert of West Texas in search of some of my favorite snakes. If you missed the last episode from West Texas, it features this incredible gray banded king snake that we're looking at here. So if you haven't seen that episode, check it out later. But for now, let's get on with today's episode. This text offense is unfair. Keeping out the herpers. I woke up from my nap and that guy was here. Steve. <laughs> I, I should have just let Steven keep singing. That would have been way better. I had no idea it was coming. It was a nice little surprise. So. Surprise. We're going herping. Well, that is such Jeez. a good way to start out the night. Look at this sub. Look at the white highlights on this thing. First snake of West Texas for the year for this guy, and it's just one of the nicest subox I've seen in a while. Look at the white highlights on this snake. What a great start. That is such a great first snake of the night. Look at those eyeballs. No crack you can go in there, is there? No. We are just going to get some quick photos of this guy and keep on moving. But nice Transpecos rat snake to start off the night. Pretty early. It's only been dark a little bit. Well, we stopped for a DOR and uh, there's a long nose snake just hanging out on this cut. We haven't seen too many of these this year, so it's kind of cool. He looks a lot different from the one we saw in an earlier episode. Really dark. Look at that guy. Really good looking snake. All right, we're gonna let that guy keep crawling. Really nice looking long nose is our next find. Seems like snakes are out in at least decent numbers tonight, so we're gonna keep at it. And hopefully there will be more to come. This guy's got a really interesting face. Look at that. All right, well way up on this cut, Stephen has, <laughs> Stephen has spotted our next snake. A big night snake, this thing is huge. I mean, not as big as they get, but definitely the biggest one we've seen this year. Meaty, meaty night snake. Here's a little scale for this snake so you can see just how big it is for a night snake. And once again, they get bigger than this, but this is kind of like the upper end of what we normally see. Maybe just over a foot long, something like that. Still not a very big snake, but for night snakes, she is pretty large. But looks like she's looking for somewhere to lay her eggs, so we're just going to leave her to her business. Oh, that's another subawk, and this one is gigantic. Look at that. With Steven for comparison. <laughs> Oh, he doesn't, <laughs> what? Well, there's our third sub of the night. The, the second one was run over and ended up dying, but <laughs> this one's nice and healthy and big. These guys are the best. Good looking snake. This one's actually sitting still. Really good looking. And this is a cool area to find a sub too. Both of the ones we found tonight have been in a really cool area and so was unfortunately the one that ended up dying, but. The subox are moving. That's the only live snakes we've seen on the road so far tonight. So we're just gonna let this beauty keep crawling and head to the cuts. We're gonna be shining here in a few. He's kinking. I like his uh, his red stripes that connect yeah. to the saddles. That was weird. I've never seen one just decide to kink up like that. That was cool. It's always cool to night cruise snakes this big because in Georgia, we don't really have anything that gets quite that big that you regularly see crossing the road at night. We have black rats, which are a lot bigger than that, but we normally see them during the day. So we're just gonna let this guy keep going and we're gonna do the same. Nice subok as our next find. Well, there is another subok even bigger than the last. Okay, he's missing a couple inches on Yeah, the stubby. Big suboks with the boys in abundance. Third one of the night. Fourth if you include the one that was hit by a car and died. Lovely, big stub-tailed subok. These are definitely the most abundant snake of the night so far. We did find a DOR diamondback 
and uh, DOR garter snake. But other than that, this is all we've seen. Bunch of subox, and that's fine with me because they are awesome, especially these big ones like this. Hey, look, here's another one of these. It's been many hours since we saw anything, but that is our fourth living subock of the night, I believe. Kind of weird when you find uh you know a decent number of snakes and they're all the same species apparently steven saw some black tails on the last cut we shined but i did not see anything and then we start to pretty much head home and there's another subock in the road all right guys so we are shining a quick rock cut to end the night but it's been pretty productive lots of snakes for the most part but a lot of them were subox and they were kind of spread out we didn't see too much uh in a condensed period of time we got our last subock of the night after 3 a.m i think and it's around five now solid night all around but i think i am going to wrap tonight up here and i will see you guys in the morning there's currently a river flowing through steven's yard it has rained a lot so we're gonna go see what we can find all right well our first snake of the night happened pretty fast it is a psychotic little mojave this thing tried to bite us already, and I have only been standing here for about 10 seconds, so we're not going to push our luck with this guy. He is definitely very grumpy and spring-loaded, so we're just going to move this guy out of the road, but a nice little Mojave to start the night. Good-looking snake. Not what I thought it was going to be. All right, I'm going to try to get a video of Steven moving this guy off the road just so uh, y'all can see how psychotic this thing is. Attitude is not something that. That, that makes them easy to handle. Some rattlesnakes like blacktails, um, timbers can be pretty tame as well, are a little bit more <laughs> relaxed. He just won't the hook. As you can see with this Look snake. Look at that. See how much venom you just put on my hook? <laughs> yeah, dude. My hook is dripping with venom. That snake just put enough venom on Steven's hook to kill all three of us. Let's see the venom on the hook. Look at that. Venom that I'm gonna do that. No. Can I get a look at the venom in this <laughs> This guy did that. Stay out of the road. Here's a cool little lizard at our first cup for the night. This is a little female canyon lizard who is zooming around. Wow. Come here, lady. I just want to show you to the people. Look at how fast this thing is. Really cool kind of pinkish orange coloration. This is a Big Bend Canyon lizard. The ones that we found in the last episode were kind of in an area where I'm not exactly sure which subspecies it is, but this is definitely a Big Bend here. But I'm just gonna let her continue on with her night and we're gonna keep on shining. This rock cut right here does not get rain very often, but it has gotten a lot of rain recently. It's getting rain now, so hopefully there will be some snakes out tonight. So, Steven just spotted what is possibly the most incredible Alterna <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. Oh my goodness gracious. That is absolutely unbelievable. It is radiating. <laughs> so, that right there is not only an Alterna, but an Alterna from a place that does not give them up easy. We have been hitting this cut for pretty much ever since I started coming out here. This has always been my favorite locality. And after many, many years of hitting this area, this stupid little wasp is flying around on our guy. But yeah, after many years of coming out here, we finally got the job done here tonight. Um, it has been a brutal series of nights over the last week or so. We have not seen much in the way of numbers or target species. So to get this done tonight really feels good. And... On top of that, it's just after 10 o'clock, so we have the entire rest of the night ahead of us. This is such a stunning Blair's Phase Alterna. And in this particular area, you can find Blair's Phase and non-Blair's Phase. So it's pretty cool to actually find our first one in this area and it be a Blair's Phase, because really, the ones from around here are some of the nicest Blair's, in my opinion. 
and they can be a variety of different, they can have a variety of different looks from this region, even within the blares. But the variation in these snakes is what keeps them so exciting, even after years of finding them. And obviously, they're stunningly beautiful almost all the time. There's definitely some dogs out there, but it's not very often you see one that doesn't take your breath away. What a fantastic looking snake. The contrast of the snakes with the rock that they live on is just so fascinating and cool. Like it's definitely not camouflage, but it's not that far off either. The gray kind of matches. It's just that random, just violently colorful orange that just, it doesn't really make sense that these snakes look like this. But uh, I suppose if you were to see this snake moving through the grass in dim light, it would be pretty effective camouflage in that it's disruptive camouflage. So Steven actually has an explanation for why the snake can be orange and how that is actually effective camouflage. Want to go ahead and let it rip, Steven? Yeah, so the theory is that uh, nocturnal predators, in your eyes you have rod cells and cone cells, and one of those is what picks up color. I think it's the cone cells pick up color, and nocturnal predators have a lack of that type of cell in their eyes. So to, uh, say, an owl or a coyote, that shade of orange really just fades away to a different type of gray. Uh, and so that helps them with their camouflage on these gray rocks. So yeah, turns out nocturnal predators really can't see that color terribly well. And it kind of makes sense because if you think about it, if, if you were to see with your limited human night vision in the dark, you can only really make out shapes and not really colors. When they're moving, it, it kind of finds an Look at this snake. There's just like, like Graham said, there's just not much to say about this. If, if this snake needs to be explained to you, then I think you might be beyond my help. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a look at this guy with Graham's video light. I'm not sure if he looks better or not, but it's definitely a little bit of a different lighting. This guy's appearance changes quite a bit in different lighting, so I'm just giving you guys some options because I don't know which one's going to end up looking best, but... I mean, it's kind of hard for the snake to look bad. It's just so strikingly colored, so beautiful in every way. Absolutely one of my favorite finds of the year. And probably Tide is my favorite alterna I've seen. Really, really cool. Here's a look at this guy in hand so you can see how big he is. Fairly small alterna, but this is a pretty typical size to see them in the wild. They get quite a bit bigger, but it seems like a lot of the ones we find are around that size. But just like subox, these guys tend to have a more gentle disposition. They can definitely be a little bit bitey, but it seems to be a personality thing with these guys. Some of them are biters, and some of them are not. This guy seems to be more of a pooper than anything. <laughs> so, so awesome. But it's so early in the night, there's so much potential ahead. So we're going to get our photos and get on with it. What an incredible way to start the night. What is this guy doing? <laughs> This night snake is almost completely buried in this very... Th Look at him, he's going right into it. Oh, his head's coming out. He must be rooting around for something in there. That's cool to see. It is. First night snake of the night. There is another reticulated gecko. <laughs> that is so cool. Look at him scrambling around up there. All right. <laughs> That's probably the best look we're going to get at that guy. Well, here's another one of these. Steven spotted another night snake. It seems like they're out in full force tonight. Uh, this guy's got some kind of interesting pattern. Looks pretty similar to one we found in this area a couple episodes back. Could even be the same snake, but nice twin spotting on this guy. Really interesting look compared to the one we saw earlier, which was pretty typical. All right, well, it's been a fat minute since we've seen a snake, but we were gonna move to a different area and found this guy in the process. This is going to be a pretty subox filled video, but that is perfectly fine. Subox and Alterna. Couldn't pick two better species to uh, characterize West Texas. Find me a better, a more iconic duo. Yeah. Name a more iconic duo than Subox and Alterna. That's an awesome looking Subox. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's almost blonde. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he's thinking about it. His sides are blonde. And he's kind of he's kind of lighter than a normal Subox, too. So after... Uh, bragging in an earlier I, that might have been earlier in this video about how subox never bite this one actually bit me several times which is definitely a first and now he's calmed down i think it was just a, an initial defensive response where he thought i was a predator and now he realizes i don't have any interest in hurting him but very nice nice addition to the diversity for the night hopefully we'll see a couple more of these before the sun comes up in the morning so we're just going to escort this guy off the road and keep at it
The wind got pretty ridiculous for our next snake of the night, but it was this titanic glossy snake. And uh, I mean, glossy snakes regularly get a little bit bigger than this one, but this one was just so cool looking. It had beautiful pink coloration and was from an area that's pretty harsh and uh, not typical habitat where you'd expect to see a snake to be flourishing like this. So really interesting pink coloration on the other side of the tail there too. Look at this. Yeah, seeing it on the ground, that might be four and a half. That is crazy. We thought it was a blonde subawk in the road because it just we couldn't see any pattern and it was just four and change feet long. And even for a subawk that's big. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Look at this thing's head is so orange too. That is a fantastic looking snake. Really, really cool. Man, tonight has been awesome. Definitely one of the best nights of the year. Actually, I would say it's definitely the best night of the year on account of that one guy we found. But uh, that's a great snake too. Look at that. Look at that orange head, so awesome. But snakes are moving, so we're gonna get some quick shots of this guy and leave him to his business. Look at that pink on the back, and the pink on the head too. Just an excellent snake all around. Well, here is a big night snake. These guys are definitely out in force tonight. All right, this guy's off the road and safe. We're gonna keep at it. Night snake number whatever for the night. We've seen quite a few of them already. Another one. They are abundant tonight. It's pursuing you. Here's another one of these. Another big one. They are absolutely everywhere the last two nights for whatever reason, but I'm not upset about it. Great snakes, but uh, the last couple we've seen have all been pretty similar, so we're not gonna spend too much time with this guy. Hey, guess what? Another one. Well, that is only our fourth Western Diamondback of the year. Third one in Texas. Grumpy man. What was the other one? Yeah, it did. Man, tonight has been so snaky. We've just seen good quality, good quantity, all around a great night with the boys. So we're actually probably gonna be wrapping up here shortly. So this could end up being our last snake, although hopefully it isn't. But we're gonna shine the cut where we found the Alterna one more time and then probably start making our way back. But nice diamond back on our way to our next cut. We're just gonna make sure this guy gets away from the road and keep moving. Here's an interesting little guy. This is a Great Plains narrow mouth. We've seen quite a few of them, but this is a big one just sitting here in the grass on the side of the road. Really cool. This is one of the bigger ones I've ever seen, actually. We're seeing sea size comparison. But really cool. Nice addition to the diversity for the night. Look at that face. <laughs> so cool. All right, I'm going to leave that guy to it. All right, everyone. We are home. And as with most nights involving Alterna, the sun is coming up. So... We're gonna get to bed here shortly and get up and do it again tomorrow. Hello everyone and thank you for watching if you made it this far into the episode. But I just wanted to take a minute to remind everyone that I am collaborating with the Orient Society to do a fundraiser for conservation this Giving Tuesday. We are hosting a raffle that has a lot of really cool prizes including a field herping trip with myself and some of the first NKF herping merch that I have released and it will be an exclusive release meaning that you can only get it from this raffle for the time being. But yeah, the grand prize is a really, really cool opportunity to get out into some exclusive protected habitat and get hands-on with some snakes that would otherwise be uh, illegal to touch in the form of the eastern indigo snake. This species is federally protected and it is one of the main goals of the Orient Society's conservation projects. So a really, really cool opportunity. And all of the money raised goes directly towards protecting these snakes. So thank you to everyone who has already bought a raffle ticket. And if you haven't, please consider it. It means a lot to me to be able to use this platform to directly help the snakes that I love so much. Raffle winners will be drawn on November 29th. So you have a little bit over a week to buy a ticket. Once again, thank you guys for watching. And I will see you all in the next episode.